you are using Bamboo Studio for your Bamboo Labs 3D printer. And for some reason, some prints are looking amazing and some doesn't. How is that possible? How to solve this issue in Bamboo Studio? Right here on Zachary's 3D Prints. Hey, Zach here. For my Voron V0.2 S1, I need to print several parts on one of my printers. And I thought like, hey, you know what? Let's use my Bamboo Labs P1S and, you know, get amazing Pedgy printed parts out of it. But they were not looking nice. I'm using Prusament Pet G. And for some reason, the prints are not looking that nice. I also talked about it when doing the iFactory one. The Pet G printed parts were looking ugly. So I went to my Fistec i3 Mark 3S, printed with the same Pet G filament, and they came out very nicely. Just, just look at it. A whole lot of a difference. But how is that possible? I'm going to show you in Bamboo Studio how to make your own Pet G or any other filament profile so that the next time you are going to print on there, you will get some amazing prints. So let's dive in Bamboo Studio, shall we? So this is the part that I want to print on the Bamboo Labs P1S. It is a part that I want to print in Pet G from Prusament. But when you are going to device here, you have the generic Pet G filament type, maximum 270 degrees and minimum temperature 220. Let's close this go back into the prepare tab and let's do something about our filament on the left hand side you have your filaments that are loaded in the ams if for some reason your filaments are not really showing up like you have loaded on your bamboo labs then you need to click on here synchronize filament list from ams you click on it and then you click on resync in my case in slot one is generic pet g orange in slot two is also generic Pet G in slot three is Polymaker PLA and in is generic PLA. These are the profiles, the standard filament profiles that I'm using when I'm going to start do some printing. But in my case, I noticed that my prints in the gray Pet G filament from Prusament that they are not looking as I want to. So to change that, next to the name, we click on Edit Preset, and now you have like this. So you want to change this first. What I'm going to do. Click on the save current filament. We are going to rename it in Prusa Ment Pet G, and then we remove this. I'm going to save it as a user preset. We click on OK, and this is now how it is called. Here you also see in slot two Prusa Ment Pet G. And now we are going, in my case, I'm going to the settings for Prusa Slicer. I have here Prusa Ment Pet G. If I go and click on filament settings, I will get all Prusa slicer settings for the Prusament Pet G. So I'm going to copy and paste most of the settings for this filament. So I'm going to slide this to the other side. And now we are going to check all of these settings, making sure that everything is as it's supposed to. Filament diameter 1.75, yeah, that's no problem. Uh, we got the flow ratio. Do we have flow ratio? If you don't find it, use the search function in order to find the setting. Yeah, the flow ratio is 0.95. Density is 1.27 grams per centimeter squared, 1.75. The cost, this is uh, 36.29. You can, you can do something like that if you want to soften temperature. So the softening temperature, I have no idea where I can find it. So the recommended nozzle temperature 220 to 270. Let's change this into 60. If you find a patch D filament that has the maximum temperature of like 265, then go back in there and change it. Or what you also can do on the box from your filament uh, brand, you have also this information here on the Prusament boxes. It's just on this side where you can see exactly. So for this type of filament, it's uh, between 240 and 260 degrees. So we can go like uh, 240 till 260 degrees. After the recommended nozzle temperature, 240 till 260, we are going to change the nozzle temperature. The nozzle temperature is 240 till 260, like we have done that for the recommended temperature. And Prusa slicer for the first is 240, so the initial is 240. And the other layers 
is 250, 250. Now we get the plates. We say like for the first layer, 85, and for the other layers, 90 degrees. So for all those plates, we are going to change them. 85 to 90, 85 till 90, 85 till 90. Like that. Uh, volumetric speed limitation. Do we have something like that? Like 12 millimeter cube per second. In Prusa slicer, it's eight millimeters. So also here we are going to make it like the same. For the cooling, we are going to check the cooling. We are also going to look in a Prusa slicer. No cooling for the first three layers. This able fan for the first three layers. Full, full fan speed at layer five. Do we have something like that as well? Okay, so minimum fan speed threshold, fan speed 40%, layer time 30 seconds. So here is supposed to be 30% layer time. They don't talk about layer time. So in Prusa Slicer, they say if the estimated layer time is below 15 seconds, the fan will run at 50% and print speed will be reduced so that no less than 15 seconds are spent on layer. However, speed will never be reduced below the 15 millimeters per second. Maximum fan speed threshold, 50% layer time, also 15. Keep fan always on, yes. Slow printing down for better layer cooling, yes. Minimum print speed is 15 seconds for schooling for overhangs and bridging yeah this is a box that is selected but i don't see it in prusa slicer cooling overhang threshold 10 percent bridge fan speed so this one i'm not really sure it is a threshold but i don't see the percentage right there i do see 50 percent for um full no bridge Bridges fan speed 50%. So this we change to 50%. And fan speed for overhangs. Okay, so we leave that and this one as well. Now we go to settings override, travel left. Oh, we have only retraction. And with retraction, retraction length. And it says here one millimeter. So one. And for the rest, nothing. Okay, so cool, cool nice advanced then we are going to advanced so that means custom in prusa slicer i will leave this as it is because this is also for the bamboo labs p1s i assume and then we have also some notes so when we are satisfied with the result we are going to click on save prusment pad g and we click on ok so as you can see this prusment pad g is also changed so uh, let's let's close this window here we are going to select the orange so that there is a little bit difference. We are going to slice it and then we are going to send it to the printer and see how much that this made a difference. And so the print is done after removing the supports for uh, of this print. It is looking a whole lot better than the first one that I got, got out of uh, out of the uh, Bamboo Labs P1S. There, there's a huge difference. You don't have the line like you, you have here it's not visible anymore it is also a whole lot looking better if you have some issues with it then try to fine-tune the profile a little bit more make sure to rename it and that is how you make your own filament profile in bamboo studio let me know in the comments what do you think about making your own profiles in bamboo studio like this video and uh, if you are not subscribed subscribe to the channel hey if you made it this far in this video you are amazing you know what Check out this video right over here. Thank you very much.